Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Okay, what device are you working on? So it's on a Conier door, so it's the uh, Conier's, the 1686, the MELs. Yep. What's going on is these, they just seem like they are struggling. What's, I mean, they pull enough to get the rods to get down, but not down far enough where the top latch, you know, holds the rods. But if I manually, you know, if I push this pan again and then hit the badge reader, they, you know, the little arm on the electric motor in the pan, it fully retracts. But if I depress it and then hit it, it only presses that pan again so far. Yeah. So, what? yeah, probably the force that you're able to conjure to hit the touchpad is greater than what the motor is getting. Uh, able, to, yes. able to produce. Now, have you adjusted the potentiometer on the power supply? I don't rem I remember last time I did. So I've been here. So what happened? So I was here about a year ago, and we were thinking, well, I was kind of thinking maybe the power supply was kind of getting weak. But that's the thing. So I have on um, this double door, I have... What is how many amps am I supposed to have? Um, I know that when they power that, they want to have a three amp. Um, when you're going to DCN, they want to have three amps. So I'm going to think, even though it sounds exceptional, something in that range. Um, I don't know. And you and you do have an NP1 power supply. I believe, yeah. yeah. I'll get back up in there. So, cause what? A couple years ago, or a year ago, I came here. Um, they were having issues with one side. I took the. I went up into the power supply, and I went up in the power supply, and I took the one panic wires and reversed them. So I switched them, and they never had an issue since, but now they're having an issue on both sides. That gets bigger ladder. Hang on. Hmm. Bear with me. i got to grab a little bit taller ladder. Yeah, the um, the answer is one and a half amps is what the that power supply is rated for, or at least the NP1 okay. is. Okay, one second. That is the the NP1, NP1. Okay. Yeah. So. Want to adjust the? So they're all the way turned up. Sort of amps are you getting? You'll want to you want to measure. Let's measure the amperage when you put it under load. But yeah, but going back to switching the wires, what wires did you switch? What terminal? So because there, because you know how you can run two. You got two channels on this. Uh, well, how many how many doors are you running on it? Uh, there's two doors. Okay. So it's a double door with two electric panics. Um, so they were having kind of what I was trying to eliminate was the panic issue, like thinking maybe it was the panic. So what I did is I just took pretty much the one door and ran it off of the, you know what I mean? I switched the one door to the other channel. I just switched the, both of them. So you went... You took one and two from door one terminal and put it to one and two on door ter on door two terminal. Correct. Because terminal last okay. time I was here, they were kind of only having issues with one side. 
So I just uh-huh. I switched those around. Um, uh-huh. Switched them around, and I haven't. You know, they said that everything worked good until just like recently. Now both of them are having the issue. Uh-huh. And it's almost like because. Right, well, I'm gonna go in my bolt meter. Bolts I have like it bounced from like 26 to 27. That's good. Check amps under the load. Okay, so not with a load. I'm getting it's bouncing from three to four. What? What? Like milliamps? Uh, yes. Okay. I got four, and then release. Now, do you hear the that motor? Yeah, I do. Why does it do that? Because so. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna push manually push this pan again, and then listen. I'm I'm gonna hit the the keypad. It doesn't make that noise, so it's only doing it if it has a load on it. Yeah, because the motor the 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 worm drive motor is not doing any work when you just manually hit the touchpad. But why it's so I've never really heard one make because they're both making that noise. That's normal. That's actually what okay. they sound like. Yeah. Okay. I've actually okay. heard them run like on my desk. Um actually okay. just okay. like last week. <laughs> so yeah. you got a good sound coming out of it. Okay. Yeah, so they just doesn't seem like they want to pull pull that those rocks. I mean obviously what you could do is pull the motor out and and keep and wire it and turn it over and see if it's traveling all the way. There could be a problem where it's not physically pulling the threaded drive. There's basically a a, a, a threaded screw that's back there that when the you know so it's a I don't know that it's called a worm drive but it's a gear drive for sure. Uh, maybe gear drive's not right either. Okay. Yeah, because if I, if I, so if, let's say I dog this panic down, the arm that's supposed to hit the panic and push it in. So if I dog the panic down, that arm will, you know, it's going all the way. But if, let's say, you know, the panic's in the lock position and I hit the keypad, that thing only pushes in a little bit. It's almost like it doesn't have enough juice like to push that panic in. Um. Yeah, it it that that could be. Um, how many how many amps is it producing under load? So that's the thing is I'm getting I'm getting like three to four. But when it's when I'll check it. But three three to four. What though? Amps went under load. It couldn't be amps because it's the thing's not producing more than one and a half amp. Okay, so here. The power is on. only producing one and a half amps. All right, well, I'm on. Well, yeah, maybe three or four hundred milliamps. Yes, that's probably what it is. Well, okay, so yeah, that's just the setting on your multimeter. Um, I mean, that certainly sounds what a motor. Actually, it sounds more than what a motor would would produce. Um, yeah, so right now, milliamps, I'm at, hang on. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking that what you'll want to do is study whether or not the motor is fully pulling the threaded bolt back so that it forces the latches to engage. 
because when you push the touchpad in, you're you're one hundred percent exercising that travel. That motor may not be doing the same. Okay. But you've said you pushed it in and then hit the motor and it holds them fully retracted. Correct. And that's yeah. the thing. So yeah, if yeah. I let's say I yeah, I dog this panic down. And I I'm gonna hit the keypad. That motor is fully retracted. Now, I'm going to undog the panic. Hit it. It doesn't fully retract it. And that's when the door is in the open position. Yeah, that's when yeah. the door, you know, is like in is locked position where I'm not dogging the panic. But if I, so if I don't put a load on that panic, it fully retracts. But what if you open the door and ha have the door open, reset the... Um, the pins? Yeah, and then try it in the open position to see if there's a problem with um, a mechanical problem. Yeah, so I pulled the... Okay, so I'll be able to try Okay, door's in the lock position, pins are, I reset the pins. I'm wondering also if you should manipulate the potentiometers because maybe all the way up is actually all the way down. Because I noticed that those rotate 360 degrees. I would be changing it 25% and I would be checking to see what amperage I get and any retraction difference. So I would be tweaking those. 25% optimize. Another 25% try to optimize. Okay. So want me to try to go back the other way on that pinchometers? Go, yeah, go in, go in some other direction and then try it. Okay. Yeah, because right now I think they're fully turned to the right, uh, clockwise. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense, but See what happens. Go like go like to the middle, like at twelve o'clock and see what happens. Okay. Grab a little bit smaller screw. <laughs>
How many milliamps should I have? I don't know how many milliamps you should be getting there. Um, it's just not something that's published. I don't okay. know what the motor is asking for. I would think it would be less than three or 400 milliamps. I don't know the ohm value. I don't know the milliamp value of that motor. I've asked. They, they just can't. The answer was more, the answer they provided was more difficult than the original question. Okay. I'm, so right now I have it on DC amps, and I, it's bouncing from three point nine to four, and that's more than what I should have, right? Well, it it, it couldn't be three point nine or four amps because the power supply is not producing more than one and a half amps. So I'm thinking it's, you know, 0.39 amp, you know, um, rather than 3.9 amp. So 3, well, no, 400 is, milliamps. This is uh, this isn't my voltmeter. I just borrowed it from a guy here, and I'm so it's on yeah DC A. So DC amps. It's not the MA, not milliamps, and it's 4.13. Dang. Um, I wonder, I, I couldn't tell you how that's producing more than one and a half amps. Uh, should I check it at the power supply? Absolutely, you should. You should be putting yeah. you should be putting the meter on terminals one and two under load. Yeah, so that's so that was at the pan. Right? Yeah. Yeah, they're both. So on terminals one and two, on both channels, it's four point one two. No, yeah. okay. So it's it's the same there. Um, yeah. And where where do you have the potentiometer set on door one right now? If that's what you're testing. 
you know, on the door you're testing. Because it shows coming out of the factory, they've got it set at 4, which is at the 9 o'clock position. Okay, so this one, they're <clears throat> door one is on F. Okay, so turn that like 180 degrees and see what happens. Because F is like, yeah. So, yeah, so change that. Put it to put it like to eight, and try okay. it there, because F might actually be zero. Okay. Okay, so I just put them both on eight. It seemed like it wanted to push it for you. Check the amps. The spinturometer, that turns up just amp, right? I believe that that's exactly what it does. It's basically a volume knob. It wouldn't. It, it wouldn't control anything else. Okay, that's what I think. Yeah. Seem to not even, I'm still getting that same number. Well, what I what I can do is actually get the NP1 and get a motor attached to it, and then jump three and four and measure it with my my multimeter um, and see uh -huh. what those motor controls actually do. I have just emailed the manufacturer to ask for the definition of what they do. I know I had it explained to me two years ago, but I want to, but I've forgotten what was said except that. It could only be that. It's a it's, it's a volume knob. 
Um, okay. So door two fully retracts the bolts. Would, would well, that be they correct? Said that, they said that they've been having an issue with both now. Uh-huh. And I'm, you know, I'm almost out of adjustment in those, that top rod to hold it, you know, that holds it down. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would think that it's, you got faults. Um, I would think at this point that it's, are you getting two flashing green lights at all times on the uh, circuit board of the power supply? On the power supply? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, just under the pinchometers. pinchometers. Yeah, that's where that is. Yeah, so yeah, they're both blinking. Like okay. one out, yeah, goes back and yeah. forth. Like one blink. Yeah, they don't blink at the same time, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that, that indicates a good situation. Right. Um, polarity's got to be correct because otherwise you would know it. Uh, 24 volts, we know that. Yeah, it's getting about 20, 26 volts. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, I've okay. measured that thing, and it's like 27, 28. Um, and the, okay, and the exit device is, is powered directly off that terminal block from one and two. Yes, one's off, yeah, one door goes one and two, and the other door goes to one and two on the other channel. So are the only terminals used one, two, and then three and four? So on door one, yeah, door one, it looks like I got panic going to one and two. And then I'm guessing keypad is on three. Yeah, three and, would be four. On three and four. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So what I'll do is um, right now the only answer I would give would be to replace the power supply outright, um, but yes, that's that's a really blunt instrument until I know what the motor control does, uh, absolutely, and I've measured, uh, and I've measured um, what amperage I'm getting when I do that. So, okay. So why don't you tell me, uh, the best I can do is get the answers and call you back. Okay. Well, let me, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit more, like, mechanical adjustment. I got, right. I mean, it seems like door door one, every time I've tested it so far now, it's fully retracted the rods and holding them. But door two, I'm going to do the same thing, make sure I'm going to do some mechanical adjustments. But see if I can get that one to do it every time. Right. And then, that's kind of, I mean, last time I was here, we were kind of thinking the power supply was going bad, and that's why, or, no, it was a panic, so that's why I reversed the channels. And, like he said, that I never had, he didn't have an issue just till like, this week. It just started both of them having issues. Yeah, so they hit the keypad or the whatever card reader and the bolts don't retract slowly. Yep. So someone yeah. goes out the door, comes shut, and the rods aren't retracted. So someone goes out and the door will relatch. Well, I mean not out. So I say someone comes up to the keypad on the outside, keys in, they open the door because it pulls it down far enough to open the door, mm -hmm. and then once they walk through, in, you know, into the building, the door comes shut, but it doesn't come shut because the rods are back in the lock position. So it just hits the head. Uh, head of the frame. Yeah. But that's the thing is I'm... But, it just it seems so like but it sounds like to me when you hit the keypad... You can't pull the door open because the bolts aren't fully retracted. And that's the thing. So if they're they're retracting them just 
enough where you can get the door open, but it doesn't pull it down far enough. But it's like it's like sometimes it does, and then sometimes it doesn't. Uh huh. Like it's uh, it's, it's like a, a hit and a miss. He said it's like sometimes, and that's the thing is I'm. I mean, I have a good gap at the, you know, across the door and the head. So, I mean, I have an eighth-inch gap, so it's not like a huge gap where I'm fighting with that rod, but I'm almost out of adjustment there. Like, I'm almost, that rod's almost adjusted all the way too much down, where if someone gives that thing a good pull, it'll pull the door open. I mean, I have that bottom rod going in, but... Uh, okay... Pam. Okay, let's um So door number two, I'm testing door number two right now. Keypad, hit it. And it's not pushing the panic far enough to actually open the door. Okay, so they're both doing the same thing basically. Pretty much, yeah. So door number one, the one I've been testing right now, it's working. Okay. Okay. And that's after you switch the terminals. Yes. Okay. So you had a problem with door one when it was on terminal one, and now you've got a problem with door one when it's on terminal two. Mm hmm. Huh. So maybe yeah. the power supply is going weird? Yeah, I mean, I'll, what I would do, I would, I would connect both devices to the known good terminal <laughs> and make sure that they both work. Okay. You know, meaning both devices work from the one known, the, the known terminal that you know is working, uh -huh. and then try them both on the other terminal and see see if that see if it's clear see. that it always works on okay. one. And never on two. Okay. Does it, um, is it okay to run two doors off of one terminal, though? No, no, don't run two doors. Okay, Just do okay. One, Just do them one at it. a time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. You, you could there. power them okay. both to it as long as they're not firing simultaneously. Yeah, okay. You know. That's what I said. Okay. I'll try that. And then. I'm going to do some mechanical adjustments on door two and see if it, change, if it changes anything. Right. And then I guess once, so are you waiting for to hear back from someone or? Yes, I would like to get the answer from the person who knows. And if you tell me your phone number, I will get that answer and I will call you back. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do that, and I will call you back as soon as I know. Okay, sir? Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yep. Hey, it's French Hello? Architectural Builders. I uh, got a lot of good information on the power supply. Okay. Um, can you talk about that now? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Oh, awesome. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm not there. I'm not there anymore. But uh, I got those two doors working. But uh, if you just, yeah, I mean, I can kind of let the guy know if that's out there. Right, right. Well, here's the bottom line: that measuring the amperage is, at 3.9, 4.1 amps is is way. Um, it, More it's, than extre it it's extremely indicative of a bad power supply, so that needs to be replaced. Um, okay. So that's that's that. Now, okay. we talked about the motor control or the or the potentiometers. So the way that that the way the motor works is that there is a default travel length equal to uh, thirty three. 
130 steps. Each step represents um, five eighths degree of rotation in the worm screw. Blah blah blah. Okay, okay. When you increase the setting on the potentiometer, you're increasing okay. it by 50 steps. So, but uh, at full um, at full draw while a motor is running uh, on startup. Um, um, it should back to the back to the amperage. It sh it should only see 1.5 amp, but the bottom line is the okay. motor control uh, is what controls how far that. It's not controlling amperage. It's controlling the travel of the worm screw. Of that. Okay. Yeah. So it would be a matter, you know, more than double the amount of amperage that would be replace it. Um, at the end of the day, it could easily be explained that you don't have control over your, your potentiometers because you've got a lot more amperage going through there, which means something okay. else is wrong in the voltage formula of E equals I times R. So voltage equals amperage times resistance. So there's Reason. something else wrong. The issue is we know it's a power supply, but now is it the motors as well? So it would definitely... Not be an awful, awful idea to tell your client, you absolutely need a new power absolutely supply, and here's why. And then if it works, awesome. If it doesn't, you got then you go to the next step of replacing the motors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's I good. will definitely let, let him know about that. Yeah. Um, so that's what I, yeah, I mean... Being that much amp, is that, I mean, is it going to hurt the motors anyways? I mean, should I just, yep. like, get, tell him that we should do both? Um, well, I, I just don't, because it's, it's a, it's a far drive, so I just don't want to, like, drive all the way over there, replace just the power supply, and then we still have that same issue. Yeah, so the problem is the power supply is over a thousand dollars, maybe eleven hundred and some dollars. I know, I know. The issue, the issue is the motors are double that, so it's hard. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, 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 so I think it's. Hey, listen. Let's try it and go from okay. there. Because you can hopefully put Humpty Dumpty back together until a motor comes in. Okay. I guess okay. it's a power I supply will... because otherwise it wouldn't be working really at all. Yeah. Okay. Or my guess is that it is a power supply, and let's assume that there's a problem with the potentiometers as a result. You get a good power supply there, and now you can control the amount of travel on the on the worm screw, which controls how far you're sucking back the latches ultimately. Okay. So there you go. Okay. I will let him know and see which route he wants to go. All right. Cool. I'll talk to you. Uh, call me on awesome. Monday if you if you're there. Okay, thanks for uh, the call back. Of course. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.